you turn the wheel, then the cart turns the wheel. Because we've got to remember that the cart's like 150 metres down that way. I should use yards because I'm not in Australia anymore. <laughs> Welcome to Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. Every year in this country, we spend over 70 million hours looking for parking. We think that's a pretty miserable way to spend that time. But Ford Motor Company and Georgia Tech have taken this problem head on by developing a parking spotter experiment and some pretty cool remote driving functions to go with it. So when it comes to remote vehicle repositioning, you guys have been so far using golf carts. That's right. What's the goal with this type of technology? As you probably know, uh, car sharing is becoming one of the emerging trends in, in mobility. Right. So with that, any type of uh, sharing program that we looked at around the world, one of the common challenges it has is that during um, the end of the day or the nighttime hours, there's something that has to happen to get all the assets back to where they need to be for the next day. Cell phone technology and, and broadband technology has advanced so far that we can re remotely control a vehicle from anywhere in the world. So for example, we could actually take this and create a virtual valet. You and your significant other pull up to a, say a restaurant, you could potentially get out of your vehicle and then the call center could take your vehicle and park it for you and you wouldn't need to do anything else other than arrive at the restaurant. So the whole thing's pretty intuitive. It works exactly as you imagine a golf cart would work. The only difference that there really is is there's just a little bit of latency that you have to account for and obviously that's because we've got to send a signal to the actuators and the actuators have to take effect. It's lunchtime here, which means it's kind of busy, so there's actually a bit of traffic. And there's some foot traffic as well that I kind of have to pay attention to. But with the three cameras mounted, you get a really wide field of view. And as long as you pay attention, I'm really finding this actually quite easy. With the current setup that we have right now, we have valet drivers on staff, uh, you know, moving cars. Would yeah. this be a more efficient way? Absolutely, because from one location, say here in, in an office, you could link up with the vehicle, move it, and then go to a next vehicle, et cetera. So one driver could essentially take a whole army of vehicles and move them around as needed. Whenever we talk about things like this and remote or autonomous driving, the first thing that comes to mind is safety. We are using encryption. We are um, looking to, uh, as we move this and progress this further from an experiment phase, understand what we need to do to address some of the challenges. I have actually talked to the guys uh, downstairs and they said that there is a LiDAR system strapped to the front of the car, which is basically a proximity sensor that is not going to allow me to go rogue. So if I decide to go a bit mental in this car and start running down students, it will actually stop as soon as it realises that there's an obstacle in front of me. When it comes to Ford as a company looking at these parking solutions, some other companies have gone with automation. Why is that you've gone with remote? Ford is, is extremely interested in autonomous vehicles and we've declared that we're working on it and that we do believe that technology right. will be feasible in the midterm. What is so nice about this technology is that um, there's always this understanding or this concern that policy may not move as quickly as the technology. So when you look at remote repositioning, it might fill a gap. And considering this is running over the LTE network, which I'm having a hard time with with my phone today, this car, we've been driving now for a good 10, 15 minutes or so, and we haven't had any brakes in transmission yet, so it's pretty solid. One of the other areas that you've been working on as well um, is parking in the city mm -hmm. and, and parking around town and finding those parking spots. So you guys are addressing this with a, is it a parking spotter? That's right, we call it the parking spotter, and it really started with looking at data coming off of vehicles today and understanding how much time is wasted uh, for people hunting uh, for parking. And then you think about where navigation has gone, right? Navigation now 
It started with just getting you where this location is, then it started mapping the best route from A to B. Well, our vision is that wouldn't that be nice? The navigation only got you from A to B, but it also got you parking. We said, could us, Ford Motor Company, could we take a look at how we might be able to become a probe? And that's really what Parking Spotter is. It's taking the vehicle, and as it drives into a known parking area, the system is turned on, and then this ultrasonic sensors that are on the side of the vehicle that are already there for other features right. start scanning both left and right and mapping out open spaces and occupied spaces. Yep. And that information is then uploaded to the cloud, yep. and then it's accessible by other customers. Our ultimate goal is to reduce emissions and reduce waste. And parking is a big contributor. Some statistics and some of our data shows that in urban centers, 20 to 30 percent of a vehicle's emissions is used just for parking. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's a lot. Yeah. And will we be able to? reserve spots down the track or is that something that will just not work because people will get annoyed? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. I think that it's inevitable that we're going to start to see reservations in some form. Well, it's great to see a couple of institutions taking on some areas of driving that really aren't that much fun. Moving around fleets of vehicles and finding a place to park them. Let's hope that this technology really gets up and running so that we can get behind the wheel and really start to do the fun stuff. For Translogic, my name's Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.